In the corridor of a Navy hospital not long ago, a couple of sailors took a last look around them and said, so long, guys, we're shoving off. Call them Benny and Bud, but you can fill in any name you wish, for they represent tens of thousands of men. And what they were remembering was a chapter in their lives that would never be forgotten. And here's the story. It's no top secret where this combat area is, for one of you will probably recognize it, the Marianas. The road that you came over might have been better or it might have been worse. In any case, the road to a field hospital is always pretty rugged, as if I'm telling you anything. Yet what you needed for treatment, you got. The man who bent down over you was an expert. And from that instant, you weren't just a serial number on a tag, you were a million dollar patient headed for what really is the finest treatment the whole world affords. From the second you reached them, you were on the voyage to recovery. When a man's on his back, he begins to do a lot of thinking. The home, the girl, friends, but a thousand men have a thousand thoughts. One thing that you do know for certain is that you're on your way back. For some, that means the States. Everywhere now, strong and friendly hands are reaching out to help. The hands of the corpsmen and the doctors and the nurses who staff the hospital ship. Some of you board under your own steam. But if you got it bad, a Navy plane saves days or weeks in getting you to hospital. For it is the special pride of the Navy's Bureau of Medicine and Surgery that nothing on the earth shall be spared to set you on that recovery cruise. For the Navy takes care of its own. So one day, you arrive at a naval hospital. No sensible person loves a hospital, of course, but these are modern down to the last detail. They exist for just one purpose, to return Americans to their shipmates or to civilian life, whole and sound in mind and body. Day after day, the ambulances bring in patients, keeping the hospitals filled with men from every part of the naval services. Sailors, Marines, Coast Guard, officers and enlisted men. Many are wounded and some just sick. The illness of others is sometimes hard to see. Here, for example, are Bud, whom we met before, and Benny from Brooklyn. Hi. Have a cigarette? No, thanks. I, I got me mittens on. How about a drag? Oh, thanks. Say, that's the same brand of cigarettes we skipper smokes. Yeah? Well, I guess you and Skipper are pretty good pals, huh? Uh, skipper got along with me okay. Yeah. I suppose you and your Skipper are just like that. Nah, nah, not like that. Like... The great rule under which they live, doctors, nurses, corpsmen, and corwaves, is pinned down in just two words, to help.
The medical officer in charge is now your commanding officer. And because medical men are forever hunting for the secrets of illness, from the skipper on down, everyone is interested in each one of you. It is a fact that not many civilians outside of millionaires could afford the treatment given you. It is called rehabilitation, and it means a whole lot more than just patching you up or dosing you with pills. And it might be explained like this. Remember when you were a kid, the time you didn't feel good, and mother had called in the family doctor? You didn't know very much about doctors then, and you didn't think very much of the whole deal. You'd rather not have any. Yet, because the doctor was a man who really was a top-notcher in his profession, he began at once to study your special case. Mother was your nurse and corpsman. A bad fever, nothing worse. But that didn't stop mother from worrying and it didn't make you enjoy being sick either. But her job, she knew, was to take care of you. And your job, you knew, was to get well and get back to your pals at school. As you started to get well, staying in bed became a pain in the neck. So the doctor, knowing this, prescribed modeling clay and books. Sickness is partly in your attitude, so these things were added to the medicine. That's what we now call rehabilitation. When you could get up a little while each day, the doctor recommended exercise. But when he said exercise, he wasn't fooling. She caught you when you stalled, and for your own good, she kept you at it. When you could go outside, the restlessness got tougher than ever. So mother found some odd jobs that let you work it out for yourself and that helped her too. You were physically fit at last and you'd kept up with your class. And you had to thank not just the medicine or the staying in bed, but the other things. And they meant rehabilitation. Yes, rehabilitation. But your mother probably called it just plain common sense. This is the ward medical officer. He's the most important person in the ward because he is your personal physician. Through his daily visit, he will carefully guide the progress of your recovery. Because of the study he does of your case, he will know more about you than anyone else in the hospital. As he is really your doctor, you can confide in him whether the matter is strictly medical or not. Books to study or a personal matter he will direct you to the right person to help you. It is part of his duty and his professional standard to see you as an individual and not just as case number so-and-so. Since everybody is different, you are a special case to him, just as you've always been to your family doctor. For he too knows that getting well is a combination of meeting your personal problems as well as your physical health. Yes, that friendly morning sick call isn't the end of a ward officer's day or of his interest. For when he spots a special problem, he begins to hunt for the answer. You are his patient. And behind that blue uniform is the endless curiosity that makes a man a scientist. That's why a good doctor means so much. Just as your doctor at home might have the cooperation of other experts, the rehabilitation officer often goes over your special case with the ward medical officers. This shrapnel wound is now practically healed, but has left weak muscles and a stiff joint. It will need special exercise. Even this early, rehabilitation will begin in order to make that leg as good as ever. And also you'll find, if you haven't already, that it starts early in the morning too. Yes, the modern treatment is to start exercises while you're still in bed. The part of you that isn't injured will become weak, so your doctor prescribes for you and the athletic specialist takes over your physical training. Among the enthusiasts here are Bud and Benny. And Benny, of course, will have something to say about it. Boy, this is the life. 
Always wanted to take my exercises laying in bed. Why, didn't the skipper ever let you do that? Oh, the skipper was all right. I remember one time, me and the skipper... Yeah, were... I know, I know. You and the skipper were just like that. No, no, wise guy, not like that, like... This is the same early morning deal you got as a kid when the family doctor recommended exercise to help you recover from fever. One day, you'll get the good news that you can get up, and the exercises are outside. They get pretty rugged now, for it is these workouts that bring a man back to the place where he can keep up with the best of them. You may be injured or wounded. You may have rheumatic fever or a tropical disease. But whatever your trouble, there will be a special department or ward in the hospital for you, regardless of cost. This is a swimming pool designed for something more important than fun, a part of the treatment that doctors call physical therapy. You learn to use the weak muscles again and bring back their vitality. Massaging sets the life flowing back into affected muscles. Massage, light, heat, and water. All of these are used on the prescription of your ward medical officer. Light therapy. Diathermy. The Whirlpool Bath. And this is the Hubbard tank for another kind of water treatment. This gym equipment will probably be more familiar to you. It is to rebuild weak muscles with special exercises. As you see, much of this equipment resembles familiar things like bicycles and things that we associate with having a good time. But now they bring us something that means a great deal more. They bring us a good time with a healthy body in the future years to come. The Navy had this shoulder wheel built, and now you build your shoulder muscles with it. This device is called a finger ladder where you stretch the arm and shoulder muscles to help restore control to your arm and fingers. The same man who was using the finger ladder. He stayed with it so faithfully that he now can tie flies, which is very fancy work indeed if you've ever tried it. For all of those physical therapy treatments are to restore the part of you that needs it, and with your cooperation, they will. But there are other things to aid your recovery, like occupational therapy. Good morning. Good morning, miss. This sure gives me. What did the doctor send me down here for? Burns, contracture, scar tissue. Well, that's what I'm trying to get rid of. Yes, I know, John. And we're going to help you. Now, here in occupational therapy, we'll give you various jobs to do all requiring particular motions of your hand and help you regain the use of your hand. Let me see you make a fist. Well, that's as far as it'll go. Here's a tool that will help you. We've built up the handle of it so that you can grasp it. Now, as the scar tissue on the back of your hand stretches and you're able to get, make a tighter fist, then we'll give you tools with smaller handles. Say, that's a pretty good gadget. What's that you're working on? 
He's modeling a duck in clay in order to use his hands and his mind. There are some of our patients who become emotionally upset, and that type of activity helps speed their recovery. This patient can watch himself get well. As he improves his leg muscles, then we can give him harder woods to saw. The patients here on the loom are working for their shoulders, arms, and hands. We'll start you out on lightweight metal first. You could also do some of this work with a large handled file. And one of the men has made a plastic cast for a patient with a broken shoulder. The patients working in this shop are learning to do many things in cabinet making and carpentry. Many a smart patient takes advantage of his time in the hospital to improve his education and train for a better job in the future. Often, officers who are receiving treatment themselves help out as instructors. Just lying in bed can slow a man down mentally. And if that happens, you've got hospitalitis. And that, brother, is no joke. What you need, Jones, is something to occupy your mind. Something to do while you're lying here in bed. But doctor, I thought I was here to rest and get well. You are. But rest isn't rust. Only part of you is injured. The rest of you, and that includes your mind, must be exercised. My mind? Thanks, doctor. Well, this is a real chance for you to finish your rate training course or to do whatever studying you've been putting off. The educational services officer has any number of things you can do to keep you from getting rusty. Looking at the ceiling doesn't help. Keep busy with a purpose at whatever you're interested in. Nothing means more than that advice. Keep busy with a purpose with something that you like and which interests you. The educational services officer has been specially trained to give you a hand with your plans for education and training for a job. If you have an interest in radio, or gas engines. Practical work is right here, which will teach you the trade or brush up on what you may have forgotten about it. If it's automobile or airplane maintenance, work kits are provided, and on a lot of other subjects, too. There's bound to be one that may help you discover a talent that you didn't even know you had. And the educational service has something to fit your particular case, whatever is wrong with you. Here's a kind of automatic quiz program called a rating machine. It tests your knowledge of the Navy by asking you a question. You choose an answer and it tells you whether you're right or wrong. And it's a matter of record that nobody ever got $64 out of one of these things. Through the Armed Forces Institute, there are actually 6,877 correspondence courses. If you began one in some other part of the world, this is a chance to go on or start with a new one. If you are still in the ward, the rating course will be delivered right to your bed. You can even practice art if you have a flair for the higher things in life, like this mate from Jersey City. So Michelangelo here gets the core wave to pose, and being a woman, she can't resist having a picture made. Chin just a little higher, please, to get that refined expression just right. And being a woman, she also demands to see if he got the eyelashes exactly as they should be. So our modest artist obliges with a sample of his work. Ah, the guy's no genius. He's a seagoing wolf. Seriously, since high schools and colleges often give credit for work done in hospitals, this may be your chance to pick up that diploma or learn a trade. Navigation is the science of safe movement from Ankara to Albany, from Zanzibar to Zanesville, on the sea or in the air. Here, the secrets of navigation are taught, 
and they're valuable to know. But there are other things to aid your recovery. Outside sports are a part of your prescribed physical reconditioning. Rehabilitation is much more than medicine and exercise and study. Now comes having a good time, which also has plenty to do with getting your mind off your trouble and your feet on the road to recovery. It's human nature to practically knock yourself out at a game, but mention work, and that's different. Chief Heath, I'm Shaw from D6. Dr. Swanson has you down for light outside detail. Chief, I'm a patient here. Me, work? What's the matter with work? We're not against it here. Dr. Swanson sent you down here because you need some light outside work. Help you get your sea legs. You keep your ship in shape, don't you, when you're a boarder? Yes. And this is your ship right now. That's right. The doctor wants you to limber up that shoulder. I think a little window washing will help that. Okay, Chief, but it still work. Shall I report the inside master dime's office? Yes, sir. This chore was specially picked because Bud will use a rotary movement of the arm. This is rehabilitation that helps him and incidentally helps the windows. Outside work, too, is a sign for far better reasons than just to keep the hospital ship shape. It means strength for your arms and for your shoulders. It means new zest in every part of the body. And husky work rebuilds the endurance that was one of the things that helped you to recover. Endurance so that a man can shoulder his own sea bag when he returns to duty. The Navy doesn't forget that liberty, too, is a part of getting well. It is up to the doctor to decide when you're well enough for liberty and whether it will be good for you. Bud, with lesser injuries, gets the word. But Benny, disgusted with the world right now, has to see that bus go off without him. There's time allotted for the things that everybody likes, traveling units, movies, and dances. And for men who like to know what's going on in the world, war orientation. Nobody has to remind you about what we're fighting for and that just because one part of the war has been taken care of, there are still jobs to do. So you'll want to keep up to date. Many a man with first-hand ideas of his own can come to these meetings to speak up about the war, the ship, or about almost anything. That is what they're for. It's not news to a family man that having the wife and kid visit him helps in getting well. But when a man who's been sick goes out and tries to drink up the town, it suddenly isn't funny at all. Much of his recovery gone. Then, of course, the Navy chapel and the chaplain are there to take the place of your church back home. The chaplain's office is always open to help you with your personal problems. Fred, I got a letter from your folks today. They're kind of worried about you. They haven't heard from you for a couple of months. I know, chaplain. I haven't written. What's the trouble? Oh, I've been worried. Anything I can do to help? I don't think it's in your line, chaplain. You see, it's about girls. Oh, I thought you had trouble. Fred, if I can help, stop by my office. Morning, Bob. How's everything? Well, not too good, Chaplain. My wife isn't well, and we have some doctor bills. Do you suppose the Navy Relief could help us with a loan? I'm sure he could, Bob. 
Finally, civilian organizations show a very real and sincere interest in helping you along the journey. At times, they certainly can add a touch of that certain something. And very, very nice. Hey, Ben, you got a match? Here, I got one. Hey, uh, look, fellas, uh, I got to write a letter. What do you mean you got to write a letter? We're going down the lake. I'll write your letter later. Let's go rolling. Sure. Well, look, this is really important. Uh, I'll see you later. Hello, sailor. Say, lady, uh, would you write a letter for me? Well, I, I don't generally do that sort of thing, but sure, I'd be glad to. Thanks. Sit down. Let me get my pen. Now then, what's the name? Uh, Benny. Benny from Brooklyn. Well, Benny from Brooklyn, to whom's it going? Huh? <laughs> Who's it going to? Oh, oh to Shirley. Uh, Shirley? S-H-I-R-L-E-Y? Yeah, that's right, Shirley. Uh, dear Shirley, this sure is a swell joint. You, uh, you mean it's a swell hospital, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, that's right, hospital. It certainly is beautiful here with weather all around you. Weather all around you? Yeah. yeah wherever you look, there's, there's weather all around you. Uh, the birds are singing in the trees and, uh, and the wind is blowing... The wind is blowing through your whiskers. And the wind is blowing in your whiskers. <laughs> oh, you got me, lady. You got me. <laughs> Say, what's your name? I'm Kay Francis. Kay Francis, the moon picture actress? That's right. Well, could I have your autograph? How about a picture? Oh, thanks. Here, I'll put it in there for you. Oh, swell. There's some cigarettes and some matches. Gosh. Say, we're going down the lake. Would you like to go rolling with us? Not this week, brother. I got lost in Flatbush once. Bye now. See you next week. Bye. Gee. The Red Cross that goes in wherever men know trouble does its job by providing many personal services to make your time at the hospital easier, like furnishing transportation for trips off the grounds. They are prepared to help you in your private affairs, such as obtaining or passing on information to people that you are concerned about. Among many other things, the gray ladies often write letters for seriously ill patients. If your injury or illness brings you a survey into civilian life, the Navy figures you'll need help there, too. So the Civilian Readjustment Office was set up for this. The officer will explain your rights and benefits as a veteran. He'll see to it that your claim for a pension is filled out right and sent to the Veterans Administration. And he will give you every bit of assistance possible in arranging your affairs. So here, where we saw them first, are the men with all this behind them. They came in sick and injured and nervous, and maybe a little scared, because they didn't know just what lay ahead of them. But they all wanted to get well, and so they did. Some are headed back to duty, some to civilian life. But every one of them, including Bud and Benny, now knows what that word rehabilitation means. Well, it wasn't so bad here. I got no complaints. Complaints? This is a swell joint. Uh, I mean, hospital. So you enjoyed yourself, huh, Benny? Are you kidding? Tea and crumpets with the chief. Rowing on the lake with Kay Francis. What? Well, I'll be glad to get back to the ship anyway. I remember me and the skipper... Come on, knock it off, Benny, knock it off. Sure. You and the skipper were just like that. No. No, wise guy, not like that. Like that. Rehabilitation. It means everything that the pride and respect and the tradition of the Navy can do for men who have given their best. And it means that the Navy values nothing more than a man's health and his life and has sailed with him on the voyage to recovery.